Please be seated. A very warm welcome to St. Thomas Church, Fifth Avenue, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to those of you who are joining us around the world via the live stream, and a particular welcome to those who support the Chapel Royal at St. James's Palace. And we know we also have members of the Chapel Royal in Canada joining us online. So it's good to have you all with us today for this very historic moment of the arrival of the children of His Majesty's Chapel Royal, their first ever visit to the United States. But they've been singing for the royal family since, well, their first mention was in 1135. So boys, you've taken a very long time to come and visit. <laughs> that was during the reign of King Henry I. And in the early days, um, the boys and the gentlemen of the choir would travel around with the court, around um, England and Scotland and uh, over in Europe, uh, eventually settling in their own premises in London. So it's lovely to have you with us, boys. I'm sorry it's been very horrible weather. It must be like being at home. <clears throat> The boys will be singing with um, our own choir of men and boys again on Sunday at 11 and at 4. And it's good to have Martin Noble with us, the director of music from the Chapel Royal, who will also be uh, doing some conducting and playing the organ on Sunday as well. So it's a, a wonderful collaboration of the wonderful, warm and affectionate links between this church and the Episcopal Church and the Church of England and the royal family. Immediately after the service, there will be a short said mass at the high altar, and all baptized Christians are welcome to stay on and make their Holy Communion. Finally, this is the last day of our annual Choir Masters Conference, so it really is a special day today. Thank you so much, organists and choir masters, and those of you who have come from quite a way around the United States to share with Philip Moore, our director for the conference. Thank you, Philip, for your direction, for your teaching and encouragement. The choir will now sing the psalms appointed for the 19th evening of the month, beginning with Psalm 98. <clears throat>
The Old Testament lesson is written in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, beginning to read at the sixth verse. Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all. And the host of heaven worship thee. Thou art the Lord God, who didst choose Abram and broughtest him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees and gavest him the name Abraham and foundest his heart faithful before thee and madest a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Jebusites, and the Girgashites. To give it, I say, to his seed, and hast performed thy works, for thou art righteous. And didst see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, and heardest their cry by the Red Sea, and showed us signs and wonders upon Pharaoh and on all his servants and on all the people of his land. For thou knewest that they dealt proudly against them. So didst thou get thee a name as it is this day. And thou didst divide the sea before them so that they went through the midst of the sea on the dry land and their persecutors thou threwest into the deeps as a stone into the mighty waters. Moreover, thou lettest them in the day by a cloudy pillar and in the night by a pillar of fire to give them light in the way wherein they should go. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai and spaketh with them from heaven, and gavest them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments, and madest known unto them thy holy Sabbath, and commandest them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses thy servant, and gavest them bread from heaven for their hunger, and brought us forth water for them out of the rock for their thirst, and promised them that they should go in to possess the land which thou hast sworn to give them. But they and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks and hardened, hearkened not to thy commandments and refused to obey. Neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks, and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and forsook them not. So ends the first lesson.
The New Testament lesson is written in the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 5, beginning to read at the verse 12. As by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So ends the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the cross of Christ, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into hell. Sit to the right hand of God, Father Almighty, from there.
Tonight's anthem is Philip Moore's setting of a small portion of the Confessions of St. Augustine of Hippo. The English translation is by the Benedictine nun Maria Balding. What are you, my God? What are you but the Lord God?
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, we give you thanks for King Charles, your servant, for his devotion to his family, nation, and commonwealth, and to the earth, our fragile home. Bless and protect King Charles in the years to come. Grant him long to reign over us and give him gifts of wisdom and discernment as together we face the opportunities and challenges of our age. Bless Queen Camilla and all the royal family. May we all abide in your love, draw strength, from the deep well of Christian hope and dedicate ourselves afresh to God's kingdom of justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear God, we give thanks for the safe arrival of the children of His Majesty's Chapel Royal. May their time shared with St. Thomas Choir School be one of joy as they make music together and learn from one another. We pray for their families back home, for all who have visited our church today, for all who are joining us in worship, both here and online. We too give thanks for all the participants of this annual Choir Masters and Organist Conference. We pray for all who will return home today. May their lives continue to be enriched by one another and their music be an inspiration to those to whom they minister. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be ever present with your servants who seek through art and music to perfect the praises offered by your people on earth and grant to them even now glimpses of your beauty and make them worthy at length to behold it in unveiled forevermore. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. As we pray for the needs of our world, we ask that you keep watch, dear Lord, of those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick. Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and love of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore.